Thank you, Jess, and, and, and thank you all for spending your day with us, whether it was uh, part of the 200 people or so here um, or the several hundred people online. Uh, we know that your time is precious, and so, uh, again, thank you for choosing to spend that here as part of our conversation. I've got a couple of thanks to give, and then I'm not going to try to summarize, but I've got a couple of key um, take-homes that I, as an individual, uh, came away with from today. I learned a lot, and again, thank you for all the uh, the folks up on the stage and, and throughout the conversation. First, just wanted to see if we could give a, a round of applause, not only for Jess and the colleagues that put this all together, but the AV team in the back and everybody that made this possible. Um, we cl clearly couldn't have this conversation, um, you know, w w without all that 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 help and support. From, from my perspective, I, I feel like as an individual, I came full circle when I started my career at the Department of Energy about 30 years ago. I was at Oak Ridge National Lab as a, a young chemical engineer, and there was somebody on that site that played bagpipes at lunch. And so I feel like, you know, I got, I got full circle here with our, our background music. Um, but again, I thought this was a wonderful uh, conversation and discussion with all of uh, us in the room engaged. So thank you all in the room for, for leaning forward and engaging in the discussion. I think, you know, we heard from our colleague from Princeton at the, at the start of, you know, CCS. It's hard, but we're going to have to find a way to do this, right? I mean, the math is crystal clear. We need to move from where we are today toward the gigaton realm. Um, in addition to everything we need to do as a society to decarbonize and get to sustainability or net zero. So absolutely crystal clear. It's interesting as a global carbon management community, how do we carry that conversation? We heard that throughout, you know, a lot of the discussion that we had here up on stage, right? The, the regulatory updates, it was great to hear the action at the state level, whether it was California and Colorado or Wyoming or West Virginia or our colleagues up in north and the province of Alberta tremendous amount of work at the sub-national level. My view is there's a lot of policy tools at the federal level here, Team Department of Energy um, and the current administration and with funding from Congress, wonderful opportunity where the rubber hits, hits the road and where all the action is, is at the state level. So how do we as a global community, how do we as, as the car management community here in the states um, work together to speed that curve? Uh, that's a really important conversation. I'm happy that it was part of the discussion here. Look forward to uh, being a, a contributor and a supporter of that moving forward. You know, there was a conversation early on, and I think in my opening remarks, a lot of good, strong policy support, catalytic support here in the states by the Inflation Reduction Act, perhaps. Um, but again, we talked about the headwinds, right? We're in an inflationary environment. There's public opposition to building infrastructure of any type, not just carbon management. How do we as a community work forward? We're going to need to find a way to get this done. Um, those are not trivial issues, right? Part of that is that conversation we need to have with the community. Over the last 20 or 30 years, CCS, this was all, a lot of this was on paper, right? And we had these, these projects, oh, here's the points and the projects that are being put forward. Now we're actually seeing concrete and steel accelerate getting put in the ground, right? We need to have those conversations with the communities to learn what communities need, what they want, what they don't want, right? That's an important conversation. That's just gonna continue as we continue to accelerate deployment. We're all in this together. How do we work together, learn from each other, right? And, and really find out what are those critical issues. I think if I look back, Right? There's a lot of geologists and chemical engineers in the community here. We're not social scientists. And so how do we work with folks that are in the room that are social scientists and have that background? Right? That's what it's going to take. That's a critical path issue. You know, I think if I take a step back, we as a carbon management community still have a lot of room for improvement in terms of how do we frame CCS as part of that broader decarbonization conversation we need to have communities at large. Right? How do we do that at local communities here as we're building projects in the Americas? How do we do that at the COP? How do we do that across all the regions of the globe? That's not a trivial issue, um, and so that's you know, something that we need to work together on as well. We talked about in one of the panels, what's the role for international markets, right? How do we get to that global maximum in terms of deployment? That clearly is in everybody's best interest. That's a lot of time and effort and work required to get from where we are today with a lot of disparate conversations into those global markets that, as we heard through some of these discussions, help everyone, right? But that's, again, a lot of time and effort. What is each of our unique role to move toward that end? It was great to have the financing panel, right? I mean, we clearly heard that developmental capital is still a challenge. We heard that permitting timeframes, anything we can do to accelerate that is beneficial. There's work to be done there. You know, we're still looking for these revenue models that pencil out with the existing policy tools and markets 
realizing that there's some air bars on what those forward-looking markets look like. And we heard on our last panel here, right, the durability of policy um, is something that keeps some of the folks up at night as well, right? And so for that, you know, screams, okay, that's an appropriate government role. Uh, but again, we're all in this together. How do we share those data points that help inform that durable policy? That's something that we, we probably need to continue to talk on. You know, I think Matt Cattell from, from SockGen, right, said, we like cookies, right? I mean, how do we as a community, right, make CCS look more and more like a well-known, well-understood cookie to colleagues in the financial sector framed broadly. That's something that, that I as an individual when I was at DOE, that the Institute now in working with others in the community are trying to do. Those are the conversations we need to have as a global carbon management community with all the actors in the finance sector, right? So to make this demystified um, and, and to make it more well understood uh, in terms of allowing and enabling that investment to continue as part of that broader sustainable investment portfolio that everybody is moving toward. And then I think our last panel here, you know, with the discussion on hubs and what's the appropriate role for hubs, how can they accelerate this deployment, right? How can modularization help speed the curve, so to speak? Um, there's, there's truly a tremendous amount of opportunity, um, but I would argue a responsibility for us to work together to get this right. And so, you know, in summary, again, appreciate everybody's time here. It's clear that this is a really exciting and a really important time for us as a, a carbon management community. I think due to the catalytic nature um, of the Inflation Reduction Act a couple of years ago, due to all the policy tools we have here, not just in the States, but in the Americas, the entire world is watching what we do here on the continent uh, in, in the Americas region in general, right? And so it's beholden upon us to get this right, to work together. Um, that's one of the reasons why I came over to the Institute a couple of years ago is how do we harness that agility, what the Institute do, can do to be helpful as possible um, to all of you that are trying to move policy forward, that are trying to move projects forward, um, that are actually trying to get this done. So um, again, thank you very much for your time. If there's anything we can do to make your jobs uh, more effective and efficient in terms of accelerating your projects, please let us know. That's a conversation we want to have every day. Um, I believe the macaroons, the fruit, are still available. Um, and so if you want to carry on any of this conversation, please be your guest after I formally close the meeting. So thank you, safe travels, and we look forward to the next conversation with you.